So I am wondering which is more broken, the Spartan defense <laughs> or the Lions? <laughs> Either way, they both are pretty miserable. And so rightly we say, Lord, have mercy. This Earlier this week, I was uh, talking on the phone with a brother priest of mine, and we were having a good time, we were laughing, and eventually he said, all right, man, I gotta go, I gotta prepare my homily for tomorrow's daily mass. And I said, dude, I got it. I got the homily for you. He said, hit me with it. I said, here you go. Just tell them, I'm broken, you're broken, we're all broken, and we need Jesus. And then sit down. So the next day he calls me and he says, dude, it worked. <laughs> I said, bro, I was kidding. <laughs> I didn't even know the readings yet, you know. <laughs> but I'm glad it worked for him. And Well, here's the thing. As I reflected on the Gospels for this weekend, I thought, wow, even though I had no idea at the time, that is really the message for us this weekend. I'm broken, you're broken, we are all broken, and we need Jesus. We need Jesus. Our first reading in our gospel is all about the sick, broken people who need a powerful healer for them to have their lives changed. And that's what we need. And maybe you're sitting there thinking, Father, I don't know who you're talking to because I'm not broken. Well, let me convince you. Some of us here, Maybe you're grieving because of someone we've lost and we're broken. Some of us, maybe our marriages are falling apart and we're broken. Some of you, maybe it's you have a, ch you have a child who just won't talk to you anymore. Some maybe are experiencing anxiety and depression. Some maybe have an addiction that they're really struggling with. But here's what we all have. We all have sin. And all of us in some way are struggling with that. Regardless of who you are, me and you, we are broken. And we need Jesus Christ. In the gospel, we hear that wonderful phrase. I shouldn't say it's wonderful, actually. We hear that phrase, the lepers, they stood at a distance. If I were to define the word shame, I would use that phrase, to stand away at a distance. Because isn't that what we do so often in our brokenness? We stay away from all those who care about us, even God, because no one should, no one should experience our brokenness. We want to hide it from everybody. There's three lies that come from shame. Number one, I will never be healed. This brokenness will always be with me. The second lie, I can't tell anybody because either they don't care or they'll reject me. And the third is I'm defined by this brokenness. It's who I am. These are lies that Jesus wants to heal us from this weekend. I have a good friend and I'm not gonna share his whole story because it's not my story to share, but I know I can share this. One of the most difficult things I've had to do recently was bring a friend to rehab. I did that this past summer. I don't want to do that again anytime soon. But I've learned through him a lot about the 12-step process over the past several months. And I think the 12 steps teach us a lot about how to deal with our brokenness. So, I don't know all of them by heart. I'm going to give you the gist of them, though. The first thing that you have to admit when you're looking for healing is that we're powerless. That we can't do it on our own. And to acknowledge that whatever this thing is that's causing our own sickness, whether it's an addiction or anything else, that I am not the one who can heal myself. That I am powerless. And from that is the second thing, that there is a God and that God can heal me. That God can heal anything. 
What's interesting, though, is the next thing that follows from that is a person who's encouraged to take a personal inventory of their life, to look at their brokenness in a new lens, and to see how they've hurt people through this thing. And we get this. We know what this looks like. How many of you have ever been angry and yelled at somebody or treated someone poorly who, was, who you were not angry with? Right? We can use our brokenness and lash out at others and treat them poorly. And so those who are going through a recovery process are encouraged to see how maybe their addiction has caused them to create wounds in their relationships and to ask for forgiveness so they can make amends. And the final stage of the 12-step process is this healing and freedom. And as they are healed and as they are freed, they, number one, give thanks to God for it, and they continue to live the steps. And the most important thing, I think, is now they help somebody else. It's just like the leper in our gospel today, the one foreigner, the Samaritan, who returned to Jesus Christ to give God thanks. Part of what we show with our gratitude is by helping others to experience healing and freedom. So the message for us is really quite simple. If you combine our gospel and the 12-step process, Jesus reverses the three lies of shame. Number one, Jesus gives us that hope that no matter what we are dealing with, he can heal us. Number two, that we can tell him about it, that we can tell each other about our brokenness, and that through this community of faith of believers and Jesus Christ, we can be encouraged to heal. And number three, that we're not seen by our addictions or our sins or our sicknesses, that we are seen for who we are as someone who is worthy of love. See, the great lie is this, that our sickness and our brokenness is something that we should do alone, but we don't have to do it alone. And with, Jesus, and with Jesus Christ, we were never meant to.